Let's talk about the hip thrust and this particular breakdown. I'm picking on Menno again, and I really apologize because he seems like a great dude, a super smart guy. He's made a massive contribution to the industry. It just so happens that a couple of these things have come out and they have a few flaws in it, or they highlight a point about the industry that tells us we don't understand some stuff we really need to understand. So the hip thrust study in question looked at doing a few different things with the feet while we went through the hip thrust. The one I want to pick on in particular is this bit where they had the participants pull their feet back or pull their heels back or attempt to pull their heels back as they went through the movement. And you can see here that Menno writes, I have no idea why they asked them to do this. And that's really telling. Let's go back to our eight to 16 year old textbook. It's not a textbook, it's a little playbook. That makes it worse though. Resultants, when we have two or more forces acting on one point, they create a resulting force. I.e. if I push something that way and that way at the same time, the result goes that way. When we're looking at the foot in the hip thrust, the foot is where we meet the ground. And presumably you're not traveling through the floor, which means you're static, and yet gravity is still pushing down on you the entire time. So if you're static and there's a force acting on you, that means there must be an equal amount of force acting back up at you, or you'd be going through the floor. If you're unsure of that, try doing a hip thrust on water and get back to me. Okay, so we know we've got one force acting up, ground reaction, pushing up at our feet, but we have another force, and that force is, if the floor were made of ice, where the fuck would your feet go? They would fuck off in that direction. And the amount of shin angle is gonna determine how quickly they would fuck off in that direction were that ice. If you stood directly on ice, you won't actually go anywhere. So when you start sliding your foot away or your center of mass is behind something, that it goes and starts shooting off. Now again, presumably, they haven't actually fucked off along the floor with their feet while doing the hip thrust. And that's because they're not on ice. They're on a floor with more friction between the material of the floor, whatever that happened to be, and let's say their trainer, I'm assuming. That doesn't mean the foot isn't going to want to go that way if it were ice. And just like the ground reaction force equalizing, if there is a force trying to go in a particular direction and yet it's static, that means there must be an equal amount of force pushing back in the opposite direction. And we call that friction. Our good friend on page six of the eight-year-old playbook. Both friction and ground reaction are acting upon the foot. Two forces acting upon the foot means we have a resulting line of force. My friend Christina did an awesome breakdown of this hip thrust and I'm gonna steal her pictures right about here. As you can see, ground reaction is shoving up. And then we have some options in terms of what we do with the foot. If we try and shove the toes forwards, friction fights back. And when it fights back, the resultant swings backwards and increases the moment arm to the knee, which would increase the quad output or quad challenge of this particular exercise. Because that force acting on the foot is trying to pull the leg back into knee flexion. And therefore the knee extensors fight it. Conversely, and the bit that Menno didn't get, is that when you pull back on the heel, friction now fights you in the opposite direction. So I try to pull back and it fights me that way, which means the resultant of friction plus ground reaction when I pull back means the resultant swings the other way. And as you can see on this picture, that creates a much bigger moment arm to the hip and potentially a very minimal one to the knee. If you can really pull back on that hamstring, it might even go past the knee and become a hamstring challenge. Or to be more technical, a knee flexor challenge because now that force acting on the foot is trying to extend the leg. This is what I mean when I say that most people in the industry have no idea what they're talking about when it comes to basic Newtonian mechanics. And that is a giant failing of our industry at the highest level. These are some super, super smart, cool, great dudes and gals who are putting out awesome content, trying to better the world. And for reasons that aren't entirely their own fault, they just don't know this stuff. So they use phrases like, I don't see why that would matter, because they genuinely don't see why that would matter. And yet we can demonstrate and explain why it matters with primary school level materials. At best, high school materials. It's not like this stuff is even open for debate. Google it. Google resultant force. Google Newtonian mechanics. Google ground reaction force. Google friction. Google inertia. These are fundamental forces that make up the nature of the world around us, and they most certainly, therefore, apply to us and our skeleton when we're doing exercise. They're not up for debate. 
the basic engineering principles. They're used to make sure that bridges work, phones can do their phone thing, and planes fly in the sky. They're shit you can understand and see and play with and experience. And they need to be a bigger part of our industry or we will keep making mistakes. Basic mistakes. Mistakes we shouldn't be making. Mistakes that fail you and your clients. So if you found this useful or want to know more, hit me in the comments with what do you want to know more about? Or hit me with other dumb stuff you've seen around the industry or stuff that you go, huh? Is that right? That feels wrong. The way we can correct this is by making some noise and making people hear it. And then when they see it, they can't deny it. This isn't obscure shit. This is shit I will happily defend in the face of anyone who wants to come debate it. It's not a personal attack. It's not about the people saying otherwise. It's about the ideas and it's about the consequences of those ideas in the real world. I guess this was some kind of mini rant, but I'm not really sure. So, rant out, maybe?